Good morning, Cougars. I'm Aria, and today is Wednesday, September 21st, 2022. And I'm Hadley, and it's a white day. Please rise and join us for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For today's lunch, we have popcorn chicken with hot roll or mac sticks. The premium meal is cheese calzones. And the sides are mashed potatoes with gravy, roasted broccoli, grapes, chocolate chip cookie, tossed salad, milk or juice. For tomorrow's lunch, we have beef taco salad or cheese crunchers. The premium meal is breaded chicken sandwich. And the sides are peas, fiesta black beans, fresh apple slices, tossed salad, milk or juice. It's everyone's favorite part of the show. It's joke time. And I have a great one. Knock, knock. Who's there? Interrupting cow. Interrupting Moo! cow. Moo! <laughs> oh, okay. Each month we focus on a character word that we should all try to practice, model, and hopefully make a habit in our daily lives. Yes, and September's character word is responsibility. And it means taking ownership in what you say and do. We can show this by using our time wisely, wisely during passing time. Hey Congress, we have a new Meet the Staff Bulletin board up for the week and it's Miss Sissel, one of our school counselors. She's sharing what she struggled with in middle school. Make sure you swing by to check it out sometime. Listen up, Cougars. There's an easy way to report bowling here at CMS called the Spreeview Program, and it's super easy to access. All you have to do is go to the Congress website, find the Spreeview icon, click on it, and then enter the information. Please make sure to use this resource if needed. We want to make sure everyone is, feels safe coming to school each and every day. The 8th grade Park Hill Trojan football team put on a show last night, led by quarterback Luke Hullinger and the Trojans beat Grandview at 38 to 16. The team started off slowly in the first quarter, but backed by a huge amount of student support in the stands, they stormed ahead and dominated the rest of the game. Louis Van Vitavia shut down the game in the middle of the field as he tackled players left and right at the middle linebacker position. A combo of one-two punch Van Batavia and Drake Gross at running back helped open up the passing lanes for the wide receivers. Plaza athlete, which receiver Joe M, played well with a spectacular catch. The rest of the team sped up to the challenge and played their first role. Trojans walked away with their first victory of the season. Make sure you come out next Tuesday and support your classmates as the team heads to face Nowlin, our Next home game will be at Plaza on October 5th against Liberty. Good, Good luck. luck! As we shared with you, we are celebrating Heritage Months and the influential people who have made an impact on our lives from each of those heritages. And we are continuing to celebrate Latinx Heritage Month. Last week, we highlighted Cesar Chavez and all of his amazing accomplishments he has done for our country. Today's influential person that we will be learning about is Robert Clement. Roberto Clement was a pioneer for Hispanic Americans in Major League Baseball. He was born in Puerto Rico in 1934, and after making the professional league there, by was an, he was 18 and played while, for a while in Canada. He moved to the U.S. in 1954 and joined the Pittsburgh Pirates. In 1964, Clement became the first Latin American in the Caribbean to win the World Series as a starting player. Despite the success, however, Clement faced racial discrimination in the United States and this led him to advocate for Latin Latinx and black players' rights in the sport. He was also passionate about a community outreach famous saying, any time you have an opportunity to make a difference in the world and you don't, then you are wasting time on earth. Roberto Clement. Clement died tragically in 1972 on a plane crash on his way to Nicaragua, where, his first were, where he was going to help earthquake relief efforts. In 1973, he was the first Hispanic baseball player to be introduced into the National Baseball Hall of Fame. He paved his way for the Latinx baseball players f for the future. Let's watch this video to learn more.
In his era, Roberto Clemente was one of the greatest players. He was unique. Clemente played in a way that none of those other great players of that era, Mays, Aaron, or Mantle did. Baseball legend Roberto Clemente paved the way for Latinos in the major leagues. Clemente is best known as that rare ball player who actually grew as a human being as his talents were diminishing. And he became a great humanitarian whose motto was, if you have a chance to help others and fail to do so, you're wasting your time on this earth. Roberto Clemente was born August 18, 1934, in Carolina, Puerto Rico. In his late teens, his ability caught the eye of Major League Scouts. Clemente signed with the Dodgers in uh, 1954. They'd scouted him and thought he had enormous talent. But because of that potential, the Dodgers actually tried to hide him up in Montreal, and they would not play him. In 1955, Roberto Clemente was signed by the Pittsburgh Pirates, where he made his big league debut and where he spent the rest of his career. None of the sports writers in Pittsburgh knew any Spanish. They would quote Clemente in broken English, pidgin English. If he said, I got a hit, they'd say, I got heat, H-E-E-T. That's how they'd spell it in the newspaper. He was an incredibly proud man, and it infuriated him when they did that. Roberto Clemente comes to bat. Over the next 18 years, Roberto Clemente quietly became one of the top players in baseball, winning 12 Gold Glove Awards, four batting titles, and leading the Pirates to two World Series championships. Roberto Clemente had a gun for a right arm. This guy played right field, and if you even thought about taking an extra base on a hit out to right field, you better think again, because he could gun you down at second base, third base, or at home. Clemente was the National League MVP in 1966 and played in 15 All-Star games. To end the game and the series with victory for the Pirates. In his last regular season game of 1972, Roberto Clemente became the 11th player of all time and the first Latino in history to reach 3,000 hits. For Roberto Clemente, reaching 3,000 hits allowed him to reach a milestone that Babe Ruth hadn't reached, that Lou Gehrig hadn't reached, that Mickey Mantle hadn't reached. It showed that this was an all-time great player. On December 31, 1972, a plane carrying Roberto Clemente crashed off the coast of Puerto Rico. He was on his way to Nicaragua to deliver emergency relief supplies to victims of a devastating earthquake. When Roberto was killed, it was just stunning. I remember my heart sinking that New Year's Eve. When such a great athlete is killed in his prime, I, I, I remember being crushed. I wasn't a Pittsburgh fan, I was just a sports fan. I, was, I think it was devastating. Clemente, by the time he died, was the patron saint of Latin American baseball. When word of his death arose, hundreds and hundreds of people drove to Pinones Beach near San Juan, Puerto Rico, where the plane went down, thinking that Clemente might walk out of the water. Only three months after his death, Roberto Clemente became the first Latino ever to be inducted into baseball's Hall of Fame. It's hard to say that anyone was the equivalent of Jackie Robinson, but Clemente is the closest thing. He was not the first Latino ball player in the major leagues, but he was the first great one. And because of the way he played and the way he lived, he set in motion a huge migration of Latino ball players into the major leagues. Roberto Clemente was posthumously awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2002. Roberto Clemente's legacy is not only being one of the all-time great players, but being one of the all-time great heroes. It's a wonderful legacy. I think he's one of those people that when you say Roberto Clemente, you smile. He just, hey, he was great in so many ways on and off the field. Stay tuned for more influential people next week as we conclude our celebration of Latinx Heritage Month. Listen up, Cougars. Anyone auditioning for Honor Choir on Thursday needs to, needs to report to the music room with your computer after announcements. Which would be now. Again, if you are auditioning for Honoring Choir, please go to the choir room now with your laptop. And that's a wrap. I'm Aria, and today is Wednesday, September 21st, 2022. And I'm Hadley, and it's a white day. Have, Have a, a great, great day, day Cougars. Cougars.